The whole point of Coherent Spark is to let people use the assets they already have and not force any particular view on how to build the Excel files. <laughs> Welcome to Powered by Snowflake, a series where I interview technology leaders building businesses and applications on Snowflake. I'm your host, Daniel Myers, and today I'm talking with Peter Roschka, CTO of Coherent. Coherent Spark is a platform for converting complex spreadsheet logic directly into APIs and powered by Snowflake. Peter, how are you today? Great. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you for having me. So it's great to have you in the studio today, and I want to learn more about how did you get involved with Coherent? And tell me more about, in your own words, what does Coherent do? Coherent's been around for about four and a half years. And uh, it was formed by uh, a number of people, including myself, who've got a deep background in financial services and technology, as well as deep complex calculations. So we actually have a fair number of actuaries on staff. And the thing that we've noticed in our industries is that there is an amazing amount of IP and assets sitting around in Excel files. And any number of situations arise where the requirement is basically, hey, can you make this system, make this database, make this application that we're building, replicate this bit of logic? And it's actually quite difficult to do that. I think uh, Excel is an amazingly powerful application. There's 750 million Excel users in the world. But most of that IP and expertise is locked on the desktop. There is no easy way to move it into the cloud and integrate it with modern system. And that's the problem that we're tackling. Whereas Snowflake works a lot on the data side, our specific focus is on the complex rules and logic. And there's some beauties out there. There's some files that are over 1.5 million Excel formulas that we've already had to convert. And those represent many years of IP and intellectual capital that's been invested as that Excel file was handed down from generation to generation of intern and eventually subject matter expert. And our goal is to help unlock that and bring it into whatever area, whatever system the customer needs to have it in. So that's a pretty exciting kind of solution that you've built, especially since, just like you said, there are so many Excel users out there today, and being able to leverage the scale of something like Snowflake is pretty valuable to them. Tell me more about the history of Coherent. How did it get started, kind of its founding story? It was originally founded in, uh, in Hong Kong by a number of people working in a number of other multinationals, having had experience abroad. And the focus originally was very much on dealing with complex risk valuations, complex financial models, and a lot of actuarial work for the insurance space. And we developed a number of different solutions. We developed an admin platform. We developed a new business platform. But behind all of that was always this hey, how do we deal with the complicated logic that needs to be expressed there? So we constructed this engine that allows you to work directly from the Excel files, which you can just turn over to the business users, ask them to fill it in, ask them to modify it, and ingest that and make that part of the system. Eventually, we realized this is such a common problem that this became our flagship product. And really, for the last few years, that's been our number one focus. And it's one of the reasons where we're seeing such extensive growth, because it is actually very easy to pick it up. And you'll feel, I'm sure we'll get into a demo in a little while. I'll show you just how straightforward it is to go from really any Excel file and be able to leverage that IP and rule set into, into something like Snowflake. Where within kind of the, the flow of data does Snowflake fit into this, this tech stack that you've built? Great question. So if you think about Excel, and a lot of people like Excel for what it is, incredibly flexible. I can work on my individual use case. I can work on my individual scenario on my desktop. Now, it is a little slow for some very large spreadsheets. But where it really starts to have problems is when you want to do one of two things. Either you need to run thousands or tens of thousands or millions of scenarios across that. Sometimes people try to cobble something together with a little VBA, and they maybe read a CSV file. But obviously, that's not going to work if you have a million different positions you need to value, and maybe you have 50 different economic assumptions that needs to happen every night. That's not going to work on somebody's desktop. Although I've seen some pretty interesting solutions where people have to say, OK, everybody, start up your Excel. We have this VBA that does some coordination. And hopefully, when we come in the morning, a portion of that will be done. <laughs> so that's, the, that's one of the problems. The other one is, if you need to do this in an online scenario, we need to evaluate risk as it comes in the door or make complex financial decisions, you can't just tell somebody, open them Excel file, punch in some numbers, and hope that they'll come out the right way on the other side. So that's the other big scenario, is when you're dealing with streaming data, large data sets that need to be valued on a consistent basis, as you would see, for example, in Snowflake, the ability to be able to call that up on demand and scale it in the cloud is absolutely essential. So Peter, this has been really 
cool to see and, and to hear and learn about how Coherent is working with Snowflake. Can we see a demo today? Ah, uh, great. Love to show you how this works. So let me start where most of our customers start, which is an Excel file. And this is not an Excel file that I created. In fact, I just went online and I Googled Black Scholes model .xlsx, and this is what came out. In fact, that's kind of important. The whole point of Coherent Spark is to let people use the assets they already have and not force any particular view on how to build the Excel files. There's things we can do to help you organize them. There's things we can help you to evolve those files over time. But as a first starting point, you can just take an Excel file as it is. And that's what I did here. This is a quick example. So if I make a change to this Excel file, change this, say, to 76, the option prices over here, the outputs wind up recalculating. And that's the logic we want to extract. And you'll see that these are not super complicated formulas. You know, they, they do some combination of the inputs. They could also be referring to other cells throughout the spreadsheet. It's kind of a minimal model. We've done models that have gone across hundreds of sheets inside an Excel file and have had millions of formulas in them. But this is an easy one to get started with and just understand how to go through the process. So all that's required for a coherent Spark is to, for you to tell it, well, here's where the inputs are supposed to go, and here's the outputs I want you to extract the logic for. And it just figures out everything in the middle, all the formulas, all the reference tables, all the lookups, whatever you might need. And to do that, all you need to do is tell us with a name range manager. And if you used it before in Excel, instead of calling a cell D4, you can give it another name. And that uh, you can use that in formulas. And also, it's what Spark uses to identify where the inputs are. I've gone ahead and labeled the inputs over here. So I've I created an X input stock price. I've also created one for the exercise price, for the standard deviation, and for the time to expire. On the output side, it's the same story. Instead of calling it X input, you call it X output. And this is what I've done on the other side of these things. It's actually very easy, only takes a few minutes, particularly even less if you know what the Excel file is supposed to do. And it's the kind of thing you only do once. And then every time you need to make an update to the file, you just re upload it again, and all those things kind of stay put. So that's the process. Literally, the training for Spark is usually just about an hour or so for most users. And there's other things we can do, like manage parameters and solves, but the basic mechanics is just what we went through on the screen. So let me jump over to Spark. I'm logging into our, into our cluster in North Virginia, Ohio. It's running in AWS. And this you can kind of think of this sort of as the project organization slash GitHub of Excel files. So trying to take people away from the wild, wild west of Excels floating around on file shares and emails to something that's a little bit more structured. In this case, I've gone ahead and already previously set up a folder for Snowflake. And we'll see in a moment that everything in this folder dynamically synchronizes to the Snowflake environment. We have a couple of models in here already. So I have, for example, this Black Scholes model, which is the exact one we were just looking at. If I click on that, I get some stats. We do version hashing and all this sort of stuff. So auditors are going to be happy that this is not just being updated ad hoc, but there's controls and all these other things in place. So if somebody comes back and say, well, where did this logic come from? You can trace it back to the Excel source code as well as the compiled code. But from a usage standpoint, what we allow developers to do is just get the API endpoint. So here's the endpoint here for this file right now. If you have an API key or a valid token, you can make calls to right now. We've also generated a little bit of a sample tester for you here. And every time I press this button, all the values recalculate and get a nice JSON view of that output of all the things that we saw in the Excel file now in a way that can be consumed by most modern systems, including Snowflake. So let's go over and jump into the Snowflake environment. So you'll recognize this is the sort of the standard working area of Snowflake. I've already set up a little bit of a table here that has some options that need to be priced. And I set it up for 1,000 of them. And if I do a quick select here, you see the structure of this table. We've got the inputs, all those inputs that we saw in the Excel file named the same way. And we have the outputs are still missing. So that's what we now want to do. So all you need to do is just use this model. It's already been pushed in as a function. And it does that on a continuous basis as you make changes and updates. You can now use it inside of the Snowflake environment just to make calls. And here's my select statement. What it's going to do is going to take the values of each one of those 1,000 rows here, wind up putting it into the model, and then evaluating and getting the outputs and writing them on this side. So if I execute this, what's happening behind the scenes is actually firing up an instance. It's actually depending on how you break down the batch. It will actually still have multiple CPUs. So you get a lot of horsepowers in the cloud if necessary. And it's already done. It's gone ahead and evaluated those 1,000 options. So 
Here we have all the outputs exactly matching what the business user intended to happen in the Excel file. Maybe one more thing to show is how easy it is to change this. So supposing this is not the option, maybe we've come with something better than Black Scholes, right? Maybe we've got our own particular take on how we want to score and value options. So maybe you want to change how the delta is handled. So okay, for whatever reason, whenever we see a delta, we're going to want to add to this plus, I don't know, 10% of the vega. Vega times 0.1. There we go. Clearly these numbers are all going to be above one now. I'm pretty sure there's just no way anybody should be valuing options, <laughs> but it's just an example of how you might be able to change something and allow business users, now that it's been tagged up, to easily make updates to formulas and participate in the development model. So there's a plugin we have here in Spark that allows me to easily update the model as just a business user. So maybe IT sent this back to me and says, hey, feel free to make your updates. It's asked me if I want to update a service. I do. It's going to convert it, go through the code conversion process right now. It's asking me for when I want this new version to be effective. Usually, you just want it to be effective right away. So we're going to leave in the defaults. It's asking me for a little bit of an update. Why did I do this? So this is the new delta calc. And in the Spark environment, that'll show up as a specifically tagged version with that description there. And we're done. We've confirmed this upload. It's now being loaded into Spark. And Spark is converting it into code and then pushing it to be available in the Snowflake environment. So now that file's been uploaded with the new rules in it, I can just rerun this in the Snowflake environment. So here it is. It's now going to make the call to the new version of that service with the new rules that we've built in. And here are the updated delta values. So great example of a data processing pipeline that's been set up by an IT or somebody who's really familiar with Snowflake and then offloading just the part of that logic to a business user that can then easily from their desktop be able to update it, modify it, probably not in a production environment, but make it very easy for them to participate in that process. This end-to-end -end flow is pretty insightful and, and really shows to me how easy it can be made, like what, what the vision should be for a lot of folks to help scale, not just the, the compute power of this, but also the, the logistics. As you said, you know, the wild, wild west of emailing spreadsheets back and forth you know, making that easier from a logistic standpoint, as well as from a, a technical scale ability. And so that's, that's really exciting to see. Absolutely. So th this is incredibly impressive. So you mentioned that you're using Snowflake external functions, right? What are some of these other features and capabilities of Snowflake that you're leveraging as part of this integration with Snowflake? Well, one of the things that Snowflake does a really good job, and I talked about a little bit in the previous slide, is you guys have an amazing ability to deal with that large batch processing. So one of the things that actually when we started doing the work with Snowflake was really great is the way that you take a massive set of calls. Like I only I did a thousand here, but this could easily be a million or 10 million. And you slice it into individual batches that can then be offloaded and then reassembled at the back end. First of all, that's a really nice pattern you guys created. And that's what on the, on the flip side, what we do is when the call comes to us, we keep those batches and we just parallelize them, then stitch them back together as they come back into Snowflake. So I think it's a real testament to the kind of design and thinking that happened inside the Snowflake environment to really make it easy for companies like us to be able to build great solutions that can run at cloud scale. That's exciting to hear. What is you know, some of the interesting customer stories that you've seen? You, know, you mentioned you know, a customer that had multiple computers trying to run, you know, some complicated VBA. What are some, some of the biggest value gains from moving to something like that to the solution that you've built? Great. I can probably think about two. There's one that is um, a customer had a, a spreadsheet that was almost at the verge of collapsing under its own weight. They used it for complex stochastic modeling. It was now, they kept on trying to buy bigger and bigger hardware to make it run faster. And they needed to also start transitioning that work to be available in an application that salespeople could use directly when sitting down with a customer. So before it was, here's an Excel file floating around. A, there's a lot of IP in there. And secondly, it required massive machines to run. We were able to take that file, crunch it down, be able to wire it into a front-end application that's just standard React. This is all standard web calls that, that you wind up doing. And I think the calculation time went something like, 100 times faster than the original Excel file. And they could now run multiple ones at the same time. So that was a really great story about, you know, the IP was already there. What was complicated is trying to get it delivered into a new platform. And they knew they had developers to do all the nice front ends, but 
you know, if any developer is given a file, say, by the way, here's a file that's like 50 sheets long, has got several million formulas in it, please try and figure it out. That's a really long amount. That's a lot of effort that they have to go through. Completely agree. Second story that might be interesting is in the insurance space, sometimes you need to constantly remodel how much risk you're actually carrying on the books. And this goes back about a year or so, one of our customers, we have a testing center built into the platform as well. And they said, oh, you know what? What if we just created a test bed of all of our active policies? It's not really for testing. We're actually going to just take all of our policies and then run them through the testing center and rescore them on a nightly basis. Because what they used to do beforehand was the same thing that we talked about, VBA in Excel, very brutal. In fact, they could only, it took them actually two weeks to get the job done. And this had to be done on a monthly basis. Now they're able to do it on a weekly basis, and it only takes a matter of minutes now. So it's a nice story of a, hey, here's a really critical business function that's being done in Excel, and we need to shore it up. We need to make it more robust, more auditable, and more scalable, and then delivering that power to them to do that. I think we are talking to this customer about Snowflake as well. This would be an amazing story because now they could actually just transition all of their data to the Snowflake cloud. It never has to leave, not just the inputs, but also the outputs can be used there. That's a really powerful story. I love customer stories like that and ones that really show the value of, of moving to a cloud model like this. Tell me more about how and why did you choose specifically Snowflake to build this solution on? Great question. So first of all, I've been following Snowflake for, for many years. Amazing company. You guys have some really, some really great tech. And I love how simple it is to use, right? So having been on the other side of the table, you know, companies trying to recreate a complex data platform in the cloud and trying to cobble it together with all the different pieces, it's a really difficult task. In fact, trying to assemble all those parts in, a, in an efficient way by the time actually in one company where we were done with the first iteration, two companies already gone out of business. So to be able to have something that just ties it all that neatly together and gives you that ability to run it in the cloud is amazing. And the second part is with Snowflake, you are at a point with your enterprise hardening that customers trust you with the data. They're willing to give you the data and make it live in your cloud. That is still something that a number of financial organizations are still debating. And what we want to be able to build solutions that consume massive amounts of data, ideally already sitting in the cloud so we can leverage that cloud scale and make it really easy for them be able to do that. Snowflake just seems like the natural partner to go with that. You guys are the first and foremost name in that space. You have an amazing tech stack and you have a customer base that's really appreciating what you can deliver for them in terms of security and ease of management. So that's really exciting. So for your customers and kind of the roadmap of Coherent, what should your customers get really excited about over the next six to 12 months? Great question. So first of all, specifically on the Snowflake side, things that you guys are doing on the app framework is amazing. The demo we just saw actually had the Snowflake cloud calling the coherent Spark APIs in the cloud and we scale on our side. And while that's great, part of the story is, can the data stay purely inside of the Snowflake environment? So if you look at our architecture diagram, we have a lot of different ways of running this. We can embed the logic pretty much anywhere. You can run it on-prem, you can run it in the cloud, we can even put it in a browser. With the new app data framework that you guys have, we'll be able to deploy directly into the Snowflake environment. So you manage the model, you update it, you version it, you do your meta tagging, whatever you need to do to make sure that your flow in terms of getting your subject matter experts ideas ready to live in a high performance scalable API is gonna be compiled, it's gonna be pushed directly into the Snowflake environment that you target. And then when you choose to run, it'll look pretty much exactly like what we just did, but the trick is that the data will never have to leave. All those compute units will just wind up sitting directly in your security framework. And I think that's gonna be a great story for customers. I totally agree. And I really like the idea, you know, I've, I'm seeing it more and more, the power of being able to bring that compute closer to the data, right? In this case, bringing that compute directly inside of Snowflake. Like you said, it enables the customer to feel secure knowing that the data is not leaving that data environment, Snowflake. That's a, a really important aspect that I think some folks don't fully realize until they see it like this. Uh, so that's, that's really cool to see. So I think if we go a little bit broader, what I think is gonna happen for is we're gonna do more integrations and we're really gonna, philosophically, what are we trying to do? There's 750 million Excel users in the world. The biggest developer pool right now is TypeScript and JavaScript. It's around 20 million, and there's a massive shortage of developers out there. 
what our vision really is to be able to take that pool, and many of them that are sitting actually in the enterprise, and they know more about the business at the, at the detail level, particularly on the complex finance and transaction and calculation side, and unlock that pool of people to be able to participate in new development methodologies, be able to participate in whatever application you're trying to build, specifically delivering the value and the logic and the expertise that they have. And that's really gonna be the story of Coherent. That's, that is really cool to see and hear. So for people that wanna learn more about you and about Coherent, where should they go? Ah, they should go to uh, coherent.global slash snowflake. Awesome, awesome. And so for everybody here today, my name is Daniel Myers, and this has been another episode of Powered by Snowflake. Thank <laughs> you.